I was going to be my witnesses. And he said to Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to the uttermost parts of the world. And missions gives you a perspective uh, unlike any other spiritual experience that I found. So let's go ahead and start with a word of prayer as I see the missionaries back. Uh, if we can all um, come on in. Come on in, y'all. Come on in. Because I know how it is to be caught when someone's praying and you got to stand still. <laughs> All right, if we can go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer, uh, all heads bow and all hearts humble before the Lord our God. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, we do thank you, Lord God. We celebrate you. Your word says, this is the day that you have made. We shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Father, we thank you for this opportunity because it's not by anything good that we've done, but simply because of your grace and your mercy that has been abundant on our behalf. And so, Father, we thank you that 2,000 years ago you set before your son the sins of us all and that he paid the debt for all of our transgressions. But Lord God, we thank you because not only did he die, not only was he buried, but he resurrected on the third day and currently sits at the right hand of you even right now as we are praying. We thank you that Jesus himself is making intercession for us. Jesus himself is pleading our case to the Father. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you that we serve an awesome God who rose with all power in his hand. And so I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will be loose in this place, and that you would open up our hearts, our minds, our spirits to receive the word of God with gladness. Father, that we will leave this place changed, that our lives will be impacted, and that the gospel of Jesus Christ will be preached to the uttermost parts of the world. I thank you, Lord God, for this ministry, the Church of Bethel's family. I thank you for our pastor, Walter August Jr. I thank you for those who labor in the vineyard. Thank you for those who love your word. Thank you for those who are obedient to your call. Father, continue to strengthen us, Lord God, where we are weak. And in those areas, Father, where we almost fall, I pray that you will strengthen us with your right hand. And Lord, as we come on behalf of these missionaries, these 10 uh, that will be traveling to Belize next week, I pray that your anointing would fall afresh on them and that, Father, that you would do exceeding great work in and through them. Father, as they leave, let them come back changed because they've seen the face of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, even for the pilots, the airline, the stewardesses, any and everybody that has anything to do with this trip, Pray for Gail's Point, Lord God, Pastor Kenny Welch, and all that you're doing in that region. So, Father, when our feet hit the ground, that we are ready to do thy will. And, Father, when it is all said and done, we pray that someone might come and say, what must I do to be saved? And, Father, we ask these blessings and believe these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank God. Let's give God a hand praise. And say, while you're doing that, I want you to go ahead and stand to your feet. I'm going to go ahead and introduce our uh, mission team. Uh, that's his cue, and he's not looking. That's his cue to come on in. Somebody wave him in so he'll know, come on in. That's Deacon Patrick Gary. Uh, Deacon Sh uh, Shirley Rockworth. Uh, that's Brother Kevin. Let me come on in like y'all doing something to me. Y'all are welcome to it. Amen. We've got Deacon Justin Olsen. He's in the back of Olsen. We've got Pastor Matthew Davis. Uh, we got Deacon Brandon Bowles. We got Deacon uh, David Smith. We got Brother Clyde Pikes. We got Brother uh, Deacon Peter Gilmore. And then Valerie Alcombe, we have Deacon Radar Season. This is your 2018 to the wonderful country of Belize, to which they will be going next week. On the 15th, and let me just tell you now because it might slip my mind, uh, as they leave on the 15th, their plane takes off at 11 o'clock. Make sure you keep a light on in your place. That light is to remind you that you have missionaries and we are to keep at your cover in prayer. Uh, so let's give them one more hand clap and thank God for them. You may have to see somebody. Uh, thank you so much. We just had a commissioning service in the back uh, where we did foot washing and we took the Lord's Supper and had a consecrated time of prayer with the team, as well as Pastor Kenny, who was on FaceTime. Um, the team is ready. 
Um, I have three new missionaries on this trip. Uh, on this trip. Uh, the rest of the team have been to Belize, um, to which this will make the 17th time uh, that we've gone to Gales Point uh, since 2015. And so I'm greatly proud of you. As, as they know, my doctor wouldn't give me clearance to get on the plane. However, uh, I am confident in this team and what God is going to do uh, with them. So this is a part of our commissioning service. And let me just say for those who don't know, uh, this is an extraordinary event. I dare you to go and find another African-American church that's as serious about missions as the Church of Bethel's family. Amen. Uh, we are serious about missions. This will make the 174th mission trip since 2001 um, from the Church of Bethel's family. Amen. Amen. Uh, well over 7,000 missionaries have gone on missions from this ministry alone. And so it is something that we believe God has called for us to do. And I would also say it is one of the reasons why God's hand is over this ministry is because we are committed to proclaiming the gospel, not just in the Pine Ridge Southwest area, not just in Houston, not just in Texas, not just in America. But if a plane will land there, we will go there. Amen. 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 Sometimes we might have to go by boat. But if we can get there, we're going to preach the gospel over there. Amen. Uh, so if you've got your programs, I want you to turn over to your programs. Uh, I'm excited about this message because uh, this message directly applies to a lot of things that are going on in my life when it talks about joy in the morning. Come on. How many of you have gone through some difficult times as a Christian? I see a couple of hands of those who have experienced some hard times. I'm talking about you're good and saved. I'm talking about you pray. I'm not talking about you have a, a surface belief. You really believe in this Jesus. Come on. But then seemingly, life does not turn out the way that we wish that it would. Yes, sir. Um, if you've been walking this walk long enough, you're going to go through some hard times. The old saying is either you're coming out of a storm or going into a storm. Right? And so let me just tell you, uh, storms are a part of the Christian life. And I tell you, Brother Lawrence, I wish I could tell you that when you get saved, that God rolls out the yellow brick road and there are no more troubles in your life. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful moment that would be. However, um, it is all but that. And so you're going to have to learn how to have a firm foundation in Christ. A firm foundation in Christ because the winds are going to blow against your house. Saints of God, please hear me. The winds are going to blow against your house. Yes, sir. And unfortunately, some houses fall mm. right. because they're not built on the right stuff. Yeah. In Psalm, uh, the 30th division of Psalms is where our text comes from. But I'm also going to take you over to 1 Chronicles chapter number 21 as well. But let me read uh, in our hearing Psalm 30 verses 1 through 12. Here's what it reads. I will extol you, O yeah. Lord. For you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. Yeah. O oh Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. Mm. O oh Lord, you brought yeah. my soul up from the grave. Yeah. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Mm. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance yeah. of his holy name. Yeah. For his anger is but for a moment. Yes, sir. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, Come on, but joy comes in the morning. Yes. Now in my prosperity, I said, I shall never be moved. Yeah. Lord, by your favor, you have made my mountain stand strong. Uh -huh. You hid your face and I was troubled. Yes, sir. I cried out to you, O Lord, and the Lord I made a supplication. Yeah. What profit is there, verse 9 says, in my blood yeah. when I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Come on. Will it declare your truth? Yeah. Hear, O Lord, and have mercy on me. Lord, yeah. be my helper. Yes. You have turned my mourning into dancing. Mm. You have put off my sackcloth and clothed yeah. me with gladness. Yeah. To the end of that my glory may sing your praise, oh, yeah. and not be silent. Verse 12 ends with, O oh Lord, my God, Come on. I will give thanks to you forever. Amen. There's a lot there. We're 
I'm not going to be able to get through it all. However, um, for those of you who are taking notes, I want to give you a couple of things that we will be talking about. In verses 1 through 3, God gave David grace mm. instead of disgrace. Come on now. In verses 4 through 10, David offered praise for God's patience. Uh -huh. Then in verse 11 and 12, the God of glory gives us gladness. Yes, sir. Many of us have heard this particular psalm if you've been in church for any length of time. However, let me just start off by saying that joy and happiness are not the same. Well, right. Amen. Joy and happiness are not the same. Yeah. Happiness comes from what's happening. Yeah. Joy is eternal. Mm. Yeah. Joy is joyful, hear this, in every circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. Not because of every circumstance. Mm -hmm but in every circumstance. As I've often shared, Romans chapter 8, verse number 28 is real for me, and that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose, even with this most severe leg injury. Many people don't understand how severe this leg injury was. And let me just tell you, the leg injury, the surgery, and all that stuff, that was not from God. Come on now. God didn't hurt me, y'all. God didn't cause the pain. But rather, God used the pain. You understand the difference? God didn't cause the pain, y'all. So all things working together, God didn't give the cancer. Come on, come on now. But God can work through the cancer. Come on, sir. Okay. Please hear this. All things work together. So God uses, but does not cause the pain that many of us experience in our lives. But joy is a byproduct of obedience. You can't be disobedient to God's word and or the, to the Lord and expect to have sustaining joy in your life. That's why many Christians live life like this. They don't have sustained joy. So you catch them, they like this on Monday. You catch them on Tuesday, they like this. Wednesday, they all the way up to the ceiling. Thursday, all the way down in the pit. True joy comes from obedience to God's word. And the Bible says that the joy that I give, the world can't take it away from me. You got to ask yourself, what type of joy do I have? Did God give me this joy? Hear this. A new car does not bring about joy. A new house, a new job does not bring about joy. Those are happy moments because it's in the moment. However, this joy that God gives us is a byproduct of our obedience to him. And how many of you know that even sometimes when you are walking this walk, Life can get heavy. Yes, sir. Amen. We've all asked the question of God whether we want to admit it or not, Lord, why? Why me? Lord, look at what I'm doing. I'm trying to live right. Yes, sir. Come on, talk back to me. Yes, sir. We've all been there. It's a part of the human experience. I am thankful for this psalm because this psalm gets to the meat. And I need you to hear this. This is David writing this psalm. Lest any of us get too spiritual and think that we are better than David, I want you to remember that Psalm 30 was written by David, to which God called a man after his own heart. The only man in scripture that has that moniker is David. Yes, sir. David wrote this psalm. But we couldn't understand this psalm without understanding contextually where this psalm comes from. So if you can, travel in the Old Testament and go back to 1 Chronicles chapter number 21, and I want to tell you how David wrote this song. Where did it come from? And we're going to look at Psalm, excuse me, First Chronicles 21 and beginning at verse number one. I want to provide you the context of how David wrote this song almost 20 years after. In verse number one of First Chronicles 21, it says, Now Satan stood up against Israel and moved David to number Israel. Yes, sir. So David said to Joab and the leaders of the people, go number Israel from Beersheba to Dan uh -huh. and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. Yes. And Joab answered and said, my, may the Lord make his people a hundred times more than they are. Well, but my Lord, the king, well, are they not all the Lord's yes. servants? Yes. Why then does my Lord require such a thing? Why should he be a cause of guilt in Israel? 
Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Therefore, Joab departed and went out through all of Israel and came to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the sum number to the other people to David. All Israel had one million. Yeah. 100,000 men who yeah. drew the sword. Yeah. And Judah had 470,000 uh -huh. men who drew the sword. Yes, but he did not count Levi and Benjamin amongst them, for the king's word was an abominable to Joab. Well, Verse 7. And God was displeased at this thing. Yeah. Therefore he struck Israel. And said, and, and, and so David said to God, I have sinned greatly yeah. because I have done this thing. But now I pray, take away your, the iniquity of your servant, for I have done very foolishly. Then the Lord spoke to Gad, David's seer, and said, go and tell David, saying this, thus saith the Lord. Yeah. I will offer you three things. Yeah. One of them for yourself, that I may do it to you. Uh -huh. So Gad came to David and said to him, verse 11, thus saith the Lord, choose for yourself. Either three years of famine, three months to be defeated by your foes with the sword of your enemies overtaking you, or else three days with the sword of the Lord and a plague in the land and the angel of the Lord destroying all throughout the territory of Israel. Now consider what answer I should take back to him who sent me. Verse 13, and David said to Gad, I am in great distress. Please let me fall into the hand of the Lord for his mercy fall into the hands yeah. of man. Yeah. All right. So the Lord sent a plague amongst Israel. Yeah. And 70,000 men of wow. Israel fell. And God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. And he was destroying it, and the Lord looked and relented of the disaster and said to the angel who was destroying it, It is enough. Now restrain your hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Hornin, the Jebusite. Uh -huh. Then David lifted up his eyes, verse 16, well, and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and uh, heaven, yes, sir. having in his hand a, a drawn sword yes. stretched out over Jerusalem. Mm. So David and the elders clothed themselves in sackcloth and fell on their faces. Lord, Lord. David said to God, was it not I who yes. commanded the people to be numbered? I am the one who has sinned and done evil indeed. Yeah. But these sheep, what have they done? Ah. Let your hand, I pray, O Lord my God, be against me and my father's house and not yeah. against the people yeah. that they should be plagued. Yes, Verse 18 and final. Therefore the Lord, the angel of the Lord commanded God to say to David, should go and erect an altar to the Lord mm -hmm. on the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. Yes, that's the contextual background of Psalm 30. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on there. Well, let me tell you what's going on in, in, in First uh, Chronicles in a very, very compact version. Satan stood up against Israel mm -hmm. in verse number one. And the Bible says Satan moved David. Mm -hmm. Satan moved him. Yeah. Satan got in his spirit. Well, yeah. uh -huh. Satan led him with the carrot to do something that otherwise... David would not do. Come on now. He said this, David, a man after God's own heart, yes, was tempted by Satan to do something yeah. that otherwise he would not do. Right. How much more do you think we are susceptible yeah. to the things of Satan? He moved David to count the numbers of Israel. Hear this, there is no glory in that which you are good at. God gets no glory from what you are good at. What you can do without even thinking about it. If you can do it in your sleep, God gets no glory from that. God does not show himself in your strength. Come on. God reveals his power in your weakness. So what is David doing? David has been winning war after war after war after war after war. Everybody that's, that David has gone against, he's crushed them. Yes, sir. And go in your minds out for a second. David is in the palace. Sitting on his throne, yeah. feeling himself. On, Don't look Come at me on. crazy. You know Come you've on. done it too. Come on now. Feeling himself. Yeah. Looking at some of the awards on the wall. Looking at the Come bank on. account. Looking at the house and the car and the prestige yeah. that the world has given him. Uh, David is feeling himself. Come on. Yeah. Because everybody that has come against him, he has utterly destroyed. Yeah. And so Satan says, man, you know what? You a bad Come boy. On, man. Man. 
Well, David man. born, can't nobody touch you. Uh, and can if you imagine this conversation between David and Satan, and then on. David says, you know what, man, you're right. Uh, I am doing it better than any king in Israel has ever done. I've united the kingdoms. Yeah, yeah. I, I have slain those enemies of God. I've done that. And David says, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to count the number of soldiers. I'm going to count the number of soldiers. Now, when you're thinking about David, he is not the commander in chief. Whenever there was a war, David didn't pick up the red phone in the Oval Office. David got in his chariot and he would lead the armies of Israel into the fight. But David says to Joab, go and count how many soldiers we got. And Joab didn't want to do this. Now, now please hear this about Joab. God will put a Joab around you. God will put a Joab around you. And that person will say, that ain't a good idea. Come on. All of us, because God is rich in mercy, he will put a Joab in front of us before we get too far out ahead of ourselves. So he said, Joab, go out there and number the numbers of the number of people. Joab said, listen, man, that's not a good idea, King. Now you the king, but that's not a good idea. But at your word, I'm going to go and do it. Uh -huh. So he went from Beersheba all the way to Dan, well, and he comes back, not including Benjamin, he comes back with almost 1.5 million men uh, 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 who were able to draw the sword. Now hear this, that's 1.5 million men, 17 years and above, Come on. ready to go to war. Now, I'm not talking about 17 year olds in 2024. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm talking about 17 year olds that were trained in war. Uh -huh. Trained to fight. He got 1.5 million of them that's ready to draw the sword, ready to die for their nation at a moment's notice, at the king's command. 1.5 million. And David is looking at that as he hears the number from Joab, and he further says to himself, You know what, man, I'm a bad man. I got anointed when I was 16. The horn of oil began to flow on my head, uh, not my uh, eight brothers. Uh, <laughs> Nobody believed in me because my dad put me all the way out to take yes. care of the sheep. Yes. Yes, sir. And now here it is, David, with 1.5 million people yeah. at his disposal. Oh, and all he's got to do is say a word. 1.5 million people will die for David. Yeah. Yes, sir. But God wasn't pleased. Mm. Because in what you are strong at, Come on. There's no need for the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, well, come on. There's no need for God. Right. There's no need for God when you are so affluent at doing whatever. Yeah. But in your weaknesses, yeah. that's when the power of God yeah. is manifested. That's what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. He said, therefore, I would rather boast in my yeah. infirmities yeah. that the power of God may be yeah. shown through me. But you know how we do. We don't like to tell people what we're weak at. <laughs> You know, on your resume, when you go put in for a job, you list all the stuff that you're good at. Well. But you don't talk about you late. Come on. You don't talk about you take long lunches. Well. You don't talk about that you steal company yeah. meetings. You don't, you don't put none of that on your resume. Yes, sir. Everything on your resume, yes, I type a thousand words a minute. Yes, I'm fluent in Microsoft, Excel, and every other thing. <laughs> Everything on your resume is what you are good at because yeah. you want to put your best foot forward at all times. Yeah. I dare you to turn in a resume with all of your weaknesses. <laughs> because if you get a job based on all of your weaknesses, come that's on. a God thing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> put all of your weaknesses in there. Yeah. I'd rather come to work three days a week instead of five. Put all yeah. of your weaknesses on there. And if you get that job, that is a God moment. Come on. But we don't like to talk about what we're not strong at. Yeah. David is here, and I want you to hear, he is patting himself on the back. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. And saying, I'm talking to people who are good and saved well, with the Holy Spirit, but don't lie in the presence of God and say that we have not also done the same. Oh, yeah. right. That's right. We have. Yeah. Here's the problem. You put God on the shelf. You put God on the shelf because there's no room for God to work through all the stuff that you're good at because he's competing with your pride. Help me. How many of y'all can do something real good? Help me. Come on, talk, 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 Come on. talk to me. Yes, sir. How many of y'all can do something real good? Yeah. yeah. You do it real good. How many of y'all do something so well that you don't like taking advice about what you're really Come good on, at? Now. Come on, talk Come back on. to me. Ah. They can't tell you nothing because you've been doing this for 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> 
God can't get in there because your pride and your acumen and your skill set are all competing for the throne of your life. Mm. So when David numbers these people, David is lifting himself up. Not God who worked through David well, to win the wars that he's now boasting yeah, about. Well, well. Come on now. But I want you to hear what this goes and what this does. God was so displeased. Uh -huh. He said, David, I'm going to give you three choices. Yes, sir. I'm going to give you three choices. Now, look, I read them. All of them bad. Yeah. Oh, yes. Every last one of them bad. I don't see yes. one that's better than the other. Yeah. God said, David, because you've done that, because you're patting yourself, because you are beating your chest, I'm going to give you three choices. You get to pick. Every one that you pick, somebody's going to die. Somebody's going to die that had nothing to do with what you did. Yeah. In all three choices, yes, somebody's going to die. Yes, sir. And saints, if we think that we can just go out here and casually sin, mm. Come on. thinking that stuff is not dying in your life every ah. time we sin, Lord, Lord. thinking that relationships are not altering every time that we sin, yes. if you think that things remain the same and you're walking out there doing whatever, you are sadly mistaken. Something is dying yes, in our lives. Yes. Yes. He says, listen, because you've done this, I'm going to give you three choices. He uses Gad, who is his seer. Seer is another word for pastor. So he sends Gad back to David and says, David, God sent me to tell you something. Yeah, yes. Choose. Yeah. David said in verse number 13 of 1 Chronicles 21, David said to Gad, I, I, I am in great distress. Please let, the, please let me fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hands of man. Think yeah. about that. Come on now. He said, he said, it's safer for me to fall into God's hands. Yes. But the Bible calls God a consuming fire. Oh, yeah. The Bible says in the book of Job that God crushes his enemies. Uh -huh. God says he puts them asunder like dust so that they are remembered no more. Yeah. And David said, I'd rather be placed in his hand yeah. than be placed into the hands of man. Why? Because his mercies are great. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel, verse 14, and 70 thousand men of Israel failed. Seventy thousand men died. Yeah. Seventy thousand mothers mourned. Come on now. Seventy thousand kids lost their father. Yes, sir. All because of what one man did. Well, the fallout from one man's sin mm. rippled down into other people's lives. Mama. Think about this as you're living your own life. Who's being affected yeah. by the bad stuff that we do that yeah. we think nobody knows about. Yeah. 70,000 people failed. And then watch this. He even put an angel that was standing between earth and heaven. Mm. Please don't mistake verse number 16. God was getting ready to destroy the earth. Yeah. He put an angel between earth and heaven with his sword, with his sword drawn. He could have cut the earth in two. Well, Y'all do know that one angel took out 280,000 people at one time. Yeah. Angels are not these little fat, chubby babies mm. dapping each other on the pitch. Mm. Come on, man. That's not an angel. Every time that an angel is mentioned in the name of the Lord and the word of God, you hear these words, fear not. Well, yeah, well. Because angels are scary. Yeah. They ain't cute. They ain't cuddly. Yeah. They stand between earth and heaven with his sword drawn, ready to reap destruction on earth, and then God holds them back. He was standing over Israel, ready to destroy Jerusalem. There would be no city of David right now, had the Lord not relented in his anger. All from one man's sin. All from one man's sin. And as you look at what's going on in David, in verse number 18, Therefore, the angel of the Lord, the, the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David, that you should go and erect an altar mm. at the threshold for warning the Jebusite. Mm -hmm. He says, I need you to go and erect an altar. Yeah. This is where Psalm 30 comes from. Where? Now, let's just take a moment and travel back some times, some days, some weeks, some months take into it. your own personal life where you disappointed God and did something you weren't supposed to do. Don't well, raise well. your hand. Raise it in your heart. Well, well. <laughs> You disappointed God. You did something that you know you were not supposed to do. Mm. You crossed the line and you clearly knew where the line was. Yes. Uh, 
David said, because you didn't kill me for that, Lord, because that was not a sin of omission, that was a sin of commission, I knew fully well what I was doing when I did it. And somebody talk back to me. Come on now. I'm talking about good and saved with the Holy Spirit yes. residing on the inside of you, sinning purposefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So he comes in Psalm 30 and he says, I will extol you, uh, mm -hmm. O Lord. God gives David grace instead of disgrace. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Thank God. Come on, talk back Thank to me. God. Thank God. Yeah. yeah. That he didn't expose our dirt. Yes. Is anybody here thankful that God didn't expose our dirt? That he didn't open up that closet that we spent so much time trying to padlock? God didn't open it up for the world to see? God covered us in grace? Come on, talk back to me. God gave him grace instead of disgrace. Because saints, I don't know if you're like me, but I got some things that I wish I could get back. Yeah, I, I had some moments where I felt like I disappointed the yeah, Lord. Yeah. I got some of those moments and I wish and I thank God for the grace that covered me because here I am after those things yes. were done, still being able to preach God's word, still uh, being able to walk on this earth. So David said, I will extol you, O Lord. Yeah. I will lift you up. Come on. Yes. Thanks to God, how do you lift God up? You remember that God didn't take you down. Uh, yeah. How do you lift God up? You remember that God didn't Come take on, you down. Now. He could have. Come on now. Yes, sir. Come on. He said, I will extol you. You have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. Come on now. Yes. Listen, you've not let my foes come in and ravage me. Yeah. Yeah. Remember what he did and the consequences thereof. David is saying, I know what I've done, Lord. Yes. Uh, the old folks used to say, listen, before you pray for anybody else, you need to pray for yourself. Ah, right? Against you and you alone Come have on. I sinned and done this evil thing in your Come sight, on. Psalm 51 says. Listen, let me look at the plank sticking out of my own Come eye on. before I notice the yes, speck sir. sticking out of yours. Yes. That's what David is saying. Yes. It's me, God. Huh? And how many of us have laid ourselves on the altar? Well, well. He said, it's me, God, standing in me. Yes, yes, yeah, it may be my wife. Yeah, it may be my husband. Yeah, yeah, it may be my kids. It may be my church members. But before I talk about any of them, deal with me Come first. On. Oh, what a day me. it would be when Christians dealt with their own sin first. Yeah. Instead of judging everybody else yeah. for everything else, why not deal with the dirt in your own life? Yeah. That's what he said. And he said on verse number two, oh Lord, my God, I've cried out and you healed me. You brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. God gave him grace instead of disgrace. How many of you know that you don't deserve to be here? Come back to the beginning. You don't deserve it. Listen, you don't deserve it. You've done a whole lot worse than a whole lot of other people and a whole lot of other people are not here, but you still are. Before you get too judgmental about the people Hello. going to jail for X, Y, and Z, just remember, you just didn't get caught. <laughs> he gave me grace instead of disgrace. Yes, sir. Pastor Dave, listen, I know I shouldn't be up here preaching. I know what my history looks like when God found me. There are many more people qualified, many more people that are more anointed to do this. I stand here not because I know how to do it, but because of God's grace. Yes, Grace instead of disgrace. He said in verse number 10, I'll sing praise because David offered praise for God's patience. Uh -huh. uh, parents, can I see your hands if you're real parents? Patience is, is a virtue. Y'all yes, yes, know when them kids done stretched you to the limit. Well, well. Oh, and I talk about to some parents. Come on now. Hold back. They done pushed you Come on to now. your breaking point. Come on now. How many of you heard your mama say, just get away from me right now? Come on, get away from me. <laughs> just get away from me. Just get away from me. Huh? Her saying, get away from me, that's grace. Yeah. 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 Because watch this, he is praising God for his patience. How many of you are grateful that God is patient with you? Hold on. Thank you. Yeah, God, I'm not where I'm supposed to be, but thank God I'm not where I used to be. I'm still making steps in the direction that you called me to be. Other people may not think that I'm doing it fast enough. But God, I thank you that you have patience with me. 
patience with me, O God. David said, I sing praises to you, Lord. And then he directs it toward the saints, to those in Bethel's family. Give thanks at the remembrance of his name. Ironically, on the time that we leave, or they leave on the 15th, it's the day that most people are going to be bowing down on Uncle Sam. They leave on the 15th. They're going to be little people that are frantically trying to get the submit button. They're going to bow down at the name of Uncle Sam because they don't want the consequences that come along with that. They don't want their money messed up. But here's what David said. I give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. It says to God, please hear that nobody should have to prime you yes. to worship God. Some people are saying it don't take all that. I would Amen. beg to disagree. I would beg to disagree and say it does take that. Yes, sir. It does take us losing our minds for Jesus. It does take yes. us getting out of our seats for Jesus. It does take us yes. raising our hands for Jesus. Yes. It does take us singing for Jesus. If they sing at concerts, if they jump up and down yes. in basketball games and football on, games and baseball games yes. to people that they don't know, how much more do those of us who know him to yes. celebrate yes. his name? Lord. It's not about what the pastor preaches. It's not about what Lord. the choir is singing. Lord. That should be something in Lord. you that gives God yes. praise. That's what David said. I'm going to praise you yes. when I remember your name. Mm. When I remember Thank your name. As a personal moment of inflection here, out of our four kids, three of those pregnancies were very, very hard, very, very trying. And when we look at our kids, we see God's grace over all of them. Hold on. Yes, sir. Two months premature in a little NICU box, tubes and all up the nose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About this big. Mm. 19 years ago. Well, well, well. Come on. Brother Jenkins, but now she's a freshman hey. at Sam Houston Glory running track. Glory. Glory. That's the grace of God. Glory. 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 My wife's placenta rupture. Mm. My Jesus. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the grace of God. Ah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. That you shall live and not die to declare uh -huh. the glory Amen. of God. Amen. See, I know what God has done for me. Well, well. Oh. See, so I don't need Brother Clyde here uh -huh. reminding me of God's goodness. Yeah. Uh -huh. I, I know how God worked in my life, worked in my wife's life, in my well. family's life. I know what God has done for me. So nobody needs to prod me Come on, when it comes sir. to Jesus. Come on. Amen. Nobody needs to warm me up, light my fire. Nobody needs to do that because I am convinced that God has been good to me. I am convinced that God has been good to me. And if I'm the only person that's going to praise him, then I will praise him all by myself. And see, this is what David said. David said, I could have been killed. I deserve to die. But you kept me alive. That's you remember when you was drinking what you shouldn't have been drinking, yes, smoking what you shouldn't have been now. smoking in bed with a person that wasn't your husband and or yeah. your wife? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, man. God said, he, he said, God, you should have killed me. But here I am right now. And every time I look back on that, the only thing that is worthy for me to do is to give him praise. Is to give him praise. Is to give him praise. I cried out. Lord. I don't know if any of you have been so low that you couldn't produce pretty prayers. Hey. Or you were quoting 99,000 scriptures in your prayer. I'm talking about you've been so low that all you can do is cry. Snotty those prayers is what we call them. Help me, Lord. And that's a good prayer if you've never prayed it. Help me, Lord, yes, is a good prayer yes, if you've never prayed it. Hey, you ain't got to yes. be all eloquent so that everybody can say how good you are praying and how spiritual you are. Sometimes you ought to just lift up a help me. If you're in a place financially, you need to say, Lord, help me. That's what David said. I cried out. I didn't use pretty words when I cried out. I said, Lord, help me. And watch what happened. He healed me. He brought my soul out of the grave and kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. 
Yes. Verse number four, he says, now that David gave grace, uh, mm -hmm. gave grace instead of disgrace, he gave praise instead of, uh, for God's patience. Mm -hmm. He says here in verse number eight, I cried out and Lord, I made my supplication. Well. Where's the prophet in my blood? Mm -hmm. Will the dust praise you? Mm -hmm. Will it declare your truth? Yes. Hear, O Lord, oh, Lord, and have mercy mm -hmm. on me. Yes, yeah. Lord, be my yes, sir. helper. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. yes. It is it is very hard to convince a generation well, that they need help when you have been taught all of your life to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every part of our society talks about girding up mm -hmm. and doing it on your own. Mm -hmm. And it sounds strange or contrary to years and decades of learning and all of this other stuff that we now have to balance out in our minds. Mm -hmm. Well, God says this to us, I want to help you. Yeah. Yeah. I want to help you. Yes, sir. But do you know God is too much of a gentleman to force himself on you? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know that you have to invite God in? Yeah. Do you know that he's never going to knock down your door? Come on. Do you know that God will never offer you help if you don't ask for it? Well, uh, right, right, right. Did you know that? Yes, sir. Did you know that he is never going to come in and shake you and say, let me do it? Well, He's going to say, I want to help you wherever you are right now in life, wherever you may be, God wants to help you there. But if you don't ask him, you'll never get there. David said, I want you to be my helper. And far too many of us call people. You got Pastor August's name on speed dial. You got your pastor's name on speed dial. Something's going on in your marriage. Counsel us, Pastor. Come on now. You got people that you run to yeah. immediately and yeah. you bypass God yeah. and you go into another person that's got issues themselves. Uh -huh. Problems well, well. themselves. Well, well. You gotta call on Jesus for themselves. Yeah. That's who you going to. Yeah. Say, help me. Come on. As opposed to going to the master who can give the help well. that we need. Amen. And far too many of us are living life on our own accord. Yes. Yeah. And the evidence of that is how your life looks now. How's it going for you? You doing it on your own? Yeah. How's it going for you? Come on now. Yeah, you making all the decisions yourself. Yeah, how's that going for you? Come on now. You ain't consulting God in your marriage. How's your marriage yeah. going for you? You ain't covering your kids in prayer. How are your kids yeah. doing? God is inviting us to help him. And I share it with the missionaries. When you get on this plane, listen, we've done all that we can do in regards to logistics. It is safety on the ground. We're taking care of the food, the flight, the transportation, the hotel. Everything's squared away. But listen, when you get on that plane, it's not the pilot keeping that plane in the air. God's hand is holding that plane, y'all. Come on. Yes, sir. <laughs> Listen, Lord, be my helper. Yes. He says, he says in verse number 11, after David offers praise for God's patience, yeah, yeah. God gives glory. The God of glory gives us his gladness. He says in verse number 11, yeah. you turned for me my mourning into dancing. Yeah. You put off my sackcloth and clothed yes. me with gladness. Yes. To the end that my glory may sing praise to you and not be silent. Lord. Oh Lord my God, mm. I will give thanks, thanks. to you yes, forever. Thank you. Mm. Let me tie this in to these missionaries. Mm -hmm. um, I am a product of missions. Where? I believe wholeheartedly from the depths of my soul about missions. Yes. Right. I can even say this and, and wouldn't be exaggerating to say it. There's no way that my life looks the way it looks right now without missions. Well, well, no way. Well. These 10 missionaries are getting ready to leave the United States of America, mm. a land flowing with milk and honey. Mm. Well, the poorest man in America is the richest man every place well, else. Well. All of these brothers got health care. All of them got mm. dental care. All of, at a moment's notice, something go mm. wrong, they run it. To, to Methodist, they run the Memorial yeah, Burning. Yeah. They got all of these things, these luxuries. Yeah. 
They got rooms in their house that they never even walk into. Mm. <coughs> yep. <laughs> Come on now. They got multiple Jesus. bathrooms. Come on, sir. Multiple closets yes, of clothes sir. that they haven't worn in years. Yes, multiple shoes. Hold on. Can bust out their credit card and go and eat anywhere uh, that they want. Yes, sir. Spend eleven hundred dollars per person to go on this trip. Come on. Uh, their own hard-earned money uh, that they work 40, 50, 60 hours a week really? to make. And then to turn around and give that money to the cause of mission, not to go on a vacation, yeah. not to go sit on the beach, Come on now. but to go there and get a hammer yes, and start working in the Come heat on. Come on now. in a place yeah. called Gales Point. Come on, sir. That's two and a half miles long, yeah. one peninsula, one way in, uh, one way out. You can't go out yeah. unless you go in. Uh. Water surrounded on each side. Yeah. Ain't no place to go. Yeah. Praise God, they're going to get there in the daytime. All right. <laughs> yeah. They got there at night, Sister Franklin. They on. might turn around and come on back. Come on. <laughs> but they're going to a place called Gales Point in Belize. Uh -huh. And listen, thanks to God, we don't go to the places that are on the post Yeah. We go to the places where the need is. Well, well. well, there's about 380 people, maybe 400 people in this village. Mm -hmm. Got about 150, maybe 175 kids. Yes. Kids everywhere. Yes. Kids everywhere. Yes. They're going to walk into this, roll into this place. Mm -hmm. In 2024, literally, that look like slave houses. Mm -hmm. They don't have the indoor plumbing, but the plumbing's on the outside. Yes, sir. And if they do have indoor plumbing, it's a makeshift plumbing, and it ain't the best. Come on. And they're going to walk into this little peninsula yes. and see kids running around on dirt roads with no shoes. Yeah, and doing any and everything to play. Yes, sir. So where our kids, if they ain't got an iPad or an iPhone in front of them, they lose their mind. Our kids don't even go outside anymore. They scared of the sun, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But they're going into a place where they're going to see time go back almost 50 years. Yes. <laughs> they're going to go into a place where there is 70% unemployment. Mm -hmm. About 80% uh, illiteracy. Yeah. That's what they're going into. And they're going into this place with the hope and the desire of bringing God's love, showing God's love Morris. in the form of building the Morris. building so that the community can benefit from yes, it. Amen. They're going to do a three-night revival. Amen. Preach God's word. Pastor yes. David's going to be doing a three-night revival, yes. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, proclaiming the gospel to the Thank people you. of Gales Point, praying that someone may fall down Thank and say, what you. must I do to be saved? Amen. Amen. And then they're going to go to the hotel and lay their head down tonight in the hotel, which is a resort mm. in Belize terms. Well... Well, well. It's a resort in Belize terms. They're going to go there and they're going to lay their heads. Take cold showers. Got to deal with some sand flies. Got to deal with some mosquitoes. Got to deal with the AC not blowing on your face all hours of the day. You don't have a sleep number bed. <laughs> you don't see any possibilities there. Ain't none of that stuff there. And you're going to have to go there and show the love of God and not bring your American self yeah. to, the, to the people of Belize acting all American ish. <laughs> to humble themselves to show God's glory. Yeah. Hopefully with the idea of this, why would 10 people spend $1,100 per person to come and work? Why, why would anybody, I understand $1,100 for a vacation, right. a place that I'm going to enjoy with a nice hotel, preferably a sauna. Uh. <laughs> but $1,100 to go and work come on. and bring nothing back except for your members. David said this, you turn my mourning into dancing. What's going to happen, and I told him this, if you don't come back changed, that's something wrong with your spirit. Something is really wrong with you spiritually if you don't come back a new Christian. 
Because hopefully what's going to happen, hopefully what's going to happen, is that there's going to be a whole lot more dancing in your life. Mm. Hopefully you will stop complaining so much. Hopefully you'll stop complaining about how bad it is and how hard you got it. When you realize you're going to meet people that have little to nothing of what you have, but still got some joy. Still giving God glory. With yes, little to nothing. Yes, a quarter of what you have. Come on. As we sit right here, right now, in the church called Bethel's family. Mm. They're going to go to a church, Galilee Chapel. Mm. That's about the size of two room 100s. Uh -huh. mm. Speak low. About the size of two room 100s. Speak. Not this big colossal building. We can fit 1,350 people in this Speak. building with all the chairs out. But do you know? If I turn off this air conditioner, 95% of y'all gonna leave. Come yeah. on. Pastor Davis? Yeah. I turn that air conditioner off. Uh -huh. I ain't even listening to this preach word no more. I gotta give you padded uh, pews. I gotta give you clean restrooms. I gotta give you programs, color programs. Because y'all don't like the black and white ones. We know that. We did a beta test. Y'all don't like black and white programs, so we have to go back to color. Mm. I got to provide all of this stuff, security on the parking lot, for us to come into the house of God and give God praise. And even with all of that, I still got to shake it. Hey, come on hey! Come on now. Yes, sir. Even with the air conditioning blowing on your neck, I got to shake it. Yes, sir. Even sitting in a padded pew. Come on. He said, I can turn my morning into dancing. Yeah. Please hear this. The God of glory gives us gladness. Yes, You have put off my sackcloth and clothed me with gladness. You've taken away my shame and given me gladness. And saints, as you progress in your walk with the Lord, God starts taking off and putting on. Yeah. For some of you out there in Jesus' name, unfortunately, you are haunted by your past. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, stuff that you've done. Mm -hmm. You haven't gotten to a place to where you literally gave it to God. Yeah. And left it there. Right. Come on. And unfortunately, you know people that know you when you did that. Mm -hmm. And they always let you remember what you did. Yeah. But God wants to God wants to take off the sackcloth. That's mourning. Mm -hmm. And give you gladness. Yeah. Says God, how many of y'all got the Holy Spirit? Well, oh, give, me a, give, me a, give me a show of hands. If you got the Holy Spirit, you should have gladness in your heart. Well, yeah. Listen, being rude is not a fruit of the Spirit. Well, well. Being mad is not a fruit of the Spirit. Yes, not smiling is not a fruit Come of the Spirit. On, it's okay to smile as a Christian yeah. because I got the Holy Spirit in his heart. I can smile yeah. even when things are not yes, going right. Why? Because I got gladness. In my heart, please hear yeah. me. I'm not trying to rah-rah you, everybody. Yeah. But once you come into a relationship with Jesus, and Jesus shows you himself, yeah. and Jesus turns you around yeah. and lets you look at where he brought you yeah. from, and you're able to see that yeah. journey and able to see where you are yeah. right now, I don't know how any other response come is on, appropriate sir. other than thank you, thank Jesus. You. Thank you. What else can you do except give you praise? When you look back over your life and see where he brought you from, you know it's not because of what you did. You know how many bad, how many y'all have made some bad decisions? Yes. Yeah, if it was not for God, we'd still be making bad decisions. It's because God took us from glory to glory in exchange sackcloth in order for gladness. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Lord. This is what David is saying when he says joy comes in the morning. Yes. I, I want to leave you with a couple of things here. Thank you. Gail's Point, mm -hmm. uh, there are 26 flags around this sanctuary. Mm -hmm. Who in here can name them all? <laughs> Not you. You were part of the youth. No, see, you part of the youth leadership. Yeah, we done this. This is yeah. yeah. I mean, y'all, who in here can name the flags? Okay. What's this first flag right here in my left? <laughs> all right. Y'all already got a hundred. <laughs> What's the second flag? 
Jamaica was the third flag. Kenya, fourth flag. Angola. Angola, Africa. Uh, fifth flag. El Salvador. El Salvador. Okay. I'm going to be quiet. <laughs> no, you're all right. Uh, sixth flag. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mariah. Help no, 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 no. I That's France. France. Seventh one. It's two words. C-R. Czech Republic. Uh, the eighth one. Mexico. England. England. The one with the flag, I mean with the leaf. That's Canada. Now you're going to get the outer two because they're inverted in colors. PR. Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. What's the green one? Nigeria. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Cuba. The Cuba. What is it? That's not Great Britain, y'all. Australia. That's, yeah, that's Australia. <laughs> okay, the next one next to Australia. It's a, it's a vacation spot. Costa Rica. Right here, Nelson Mandela. Yeah, that's South Africa. South Africa. Green and yellow. Brazil. In the corner. Rwanda. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It's in Africa. Ethiopia? Nope. Nope. Uh, wait, before you get that answer, um, uh, Don Chiel, no, not Don Chiel, what's his name? No, not Rwanda. Um, it's Ethiopia, y'all. No, um, the second one, blue, yellow, green. You just said it. Rwanda. The orange, white, and green. Is why all the call, if you call your um, try to get customer service. <laughs> well, it is. It's India. India, the red with the yellow stars. That's China, blue and white. Been all in the news. Israel. Right here, Ghana, there you go, right next, been in the news, they're in a war with Ukraine, Russia, right here, on steroids, it's Las Vegas on steroids, it's, yeah, it's Dubai, but it's United Arab Emirates, UAE, and then the last one, that's Haiti. I ate it, yeah. Now you can look at you learn how to learn. How many of you have been to three of those countries? All right, let's see. I've been to five of those countries. Okay. You've been to seven of those countries. Anybody been to ten of those countries? That's why I got to get you on missions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have missions and partnerships in every last one of these 26 countries. I'm ready for you to get on the plane. <laughs> and go and do God's will. Yeah. In verses 1 through 3, God gave David grace instead of disgrace. In verse 4 through 10, David offered praise for God's patience. Mm -hmm. And then verse 11 and 12, the God of glory gives us gladness. Yeah. Uh, I would like in Jesus' name for you guys to really be praying um, for this team. You'll probably be able to see them from your house mm. because of the church. <laughs> <laughs> Just look out the window, you'll be able to see all ten of them. You'll be able to see them, Mac. You'll be able to see them. You'll be able to see them. You'll know they're okay. Uh, but I need you to be praying for them. Uh, my first time missionaries, if you can stand, I got Brother Mac, uh, Wadsworth, and I got Justin Osteen. Uh, first time missionaries. First time, not the last time. 
I'm extremely proud of this, um, these young people because uh, I try to give everybody I can to be able to get on the mission trip. Amen. And if you are a preacher of the gospel, don't call yourself a preacher of the gospel unless you go on a mission. You're not a preacher if you don't on, not go on a mission. So, be praying for them. Let me give you their names once again. I'm going to have you stand. And then I'm going to have you go right over here to the back. And um, everybody, before you leave on today, I would like you to shake their hands. Uh, we're going to take up our general offering. And then we're going to have an offering just for the missionaries. Whatever God lays upon your heart, just drop it uh, in the uh, baskets. But let me have them stand. Uh, Brother um, Deacon Peter Gilmo. Mm. We call him Gilmo. 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 Deacon Radar Zizan. That's Caesar, y'all remember the seven last names? He was Caesar. Uh, Deacon Patrick Garrett. Deacon Sherman Wadsworth. Soon to be Deacon Kevin Mack. Deacon Justin Ozee. Pastor Matthew Davis of New Beginnings uh, Baptist Church. We have Deacon Brandon Bolden. We have Deacon David Smith. Soon to be Deacon, where's the white man? Soon to be uh, <laughs> Clyde Pikes. I was trying to say Deacon or uh, Reverend, but it's an inside joke. <laughs> Reverend Pastor, that's what he is. <laughs> uh, this is our team that will be traveling on the 15th, coming back on the 19th. Let's celebrate them one more time with Jesus. Uh, let's bow for a moment of prayer. Uh, Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you, Lord God. We thank you for such a time as this. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, that our hearts have been encouraged, our spirits have been lifted. Uh, I pray that the word of God that has been taught has been taught with clarity and with understanding, and that you give us um, reasonable ways by which to apply your word. Uh, Father, I ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that the Holy Spirit would go before us and make the crooked road straight. And I pray that if there is anyone here that has never made a confession of faith, in the Lord Jesus would do so now. Uh, Father, you said that if we believe that, Jesus, that God raised Jesus from the dead, uh, we shall be saved. Uh, Father, thank you for this time. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for our missionaries. And Father, as we take up our offerings for tonight, I pray that you would uh, return back to the soul 100-fold of what he or she may sow into this ministry, as we know that it is fertile ground, and asking, Lord God, that you will be pleased in all that we do. We love you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Let's celebrate God one more time. Uh, deacons, if I can have two deacons come down.